Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a project which is going to be the foundation for my next big project in a series of Python tutorials I'll be walking you through. So you might have seen my earlier videos about how I carry out investigations using spreadsheets that have question marks filled in and function names. Well, the way that system works is you have to think about it initially in terms of a spreadsheet. We're going to be breaking the dependency on spreadsheets, but to understand what the heck I'm talking about, rows and columns are most often easily understood by people when you imagine them to be a spreadsheet. So the first thing you have is some sort of indexing system so that you can address all the cells. And let's see, we've got one, let's just go with three, three columns for now. And uh, you've got your uh, one, column one, column two, column three, and then your numbering system on the vertical changes to letters. So you've got your column A, or your row A, your row B, your row C, and D down the line. And these make addressable cells. So already you've got this wonderful system because you can address any of these cells in the grid by like A1, B2, and so on. So the way my system works is the first row becomes function names or optionally arguments with values. So let's fill in foo bar and lumberjack. And then to think of these as either arguments or function names, I'll do the next uh, set of values in blue. So let's say foo is hello and bar is world. And then we actually just put a question mark in for lumberjack. And we'll do one more column, we'll call or row, we'll call this spam, and this we'll call eggs, and we'll put the question mark in for this as well. So do you see where this is going? If somewhere in the system we have a function lurking back on a server somewhere that's defined as lumberjack, that takes the parameters foo and bar and then returns foo plus space plus bar. When you hit that magic button that sits at the top of the spreadsheet. It starts the processing and it goes across, gets all the function and parameter names, and then it starts this next row and it says, oh, you want to feed the values hello and world into function lumberjack. Or in fact, it says, you want the output of function lumberjack do I have the required arguments available? Oh, yes, I do. They were in prior columns. And then the question mark gets replaced with hello world. Such a beautiful, elegant framework for doing rapid investigations. Because now you don't have to worry about the outer loop of the Python, whether you're stepping through for each item in set or feeding text files to give a large set of uh, input parameters or while loops or any of this other you know 
um, container, loop container nonsense, the spreadsheet itself becomes the loop container and it alleviates so much user interface development work it's not even funny, which is why the last version of this system was tightly coupled to Google Spreadsheets. It was hard to envision another way. That was a half decade ago. I've envisioned another way. Obviously, this is going to become spam eggs. So what is that other way? It is now time to take a moment to talk about JSON, JavaScript Object Notation Objects, which are extremely similar to Python dictionary objects. So another way to look at a row, we can take this row, and we can state this row in another way, contain all this same information by making a curly bracket and saying there's a name value pair in here. Name value pair. Name value pair. So the name is foo colon and the value is hello comma. The name is bar and the value is world. And then finally, the name is Lumberjack. And the value is question mark. There you have it. That is another way to represent this row. Now this can be in a whole series of dictionary objects or JSON objects because you can nest these things. Now it turns out that there's a really easy way to do it by putting a square bracket at the beginning and a square bracket at the end. And then you would have dictionary, 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 dictionary just separated by commas in between. And that has a lot of merit going for it, but then you couldn't say, I want to access the dictionary whose first value is foo, because there's no ordered dependency in these name value pairs. It's just a whole bunch of name value pairs thrown into a giant bucket. So instead of square brackets, which is the way to define a list, we use curly brackets instead, which means something has to equal this entire dictionary. I'll just grab the first value out of the dictionary and arbitrarily call that the key. Whoops, that's foo. Foo colon this entire dictionary. To make that clearer, I will do the second line, which is this one here. And I believe I will use a different color for the outer key because that is critical to this understanding. So this is foo colon this whole dictionary this next one is going to be, you've got your comma here, so it's going to be spam colon, and I'll have to draw it a little bit smaller, spam, that's foo colon spam, ooh, yeah, right, so this becomes foo, you can't have the same key repeated over and over, so it's not really foo that goes out there, it is hello. Our key value pair becomes hello, colon, this whole dictionary, and likewise, 
this becomes foo colon spam comma bar colon eggs comma lumberjack colon question mark and that could go on indefinitely hello becomes this key spam becomes this key if it went on with you know uh, the knights who say me then knights would become this next key Then there would be another dictionary, and so on down the line until the dictionary of dictionaries gets closed with another curly bracket. And then what happens with all this data? All this data that is represented by everything from this curly bracket all down to this closing bracket all gets put in a text file sitting on your hard drive for persistence so that you can access it over and over. And as the question marks get replaced, this very text file gets updated over and over until your investigation is complete and all your values are sitting easily accessible with further JavaScript or Python code that can just reach in there and get your answers. And so that is the basics of the system I'm going to be walking you through where the user interface could still reside in a spreadsheet, but it can work completely independently of a, a user interface or a spreadsheet and work in sort of a headless way so that you can schedule jobs to go on invisibly in the background according to a schedule. And, well, things are going to fill up on the hard drive. The wonderful part here is that there can be a decoupling of the uh, spreadsheet from a text file. This does not have to be a text file. This can be Redis. This could be uh, MongoDB. Could even be MySQL. Amazon S3, basically any of those big data back-end things that can accommodate name-value pairs. And yes, MySQL can accommodate name-value pairs, like a NoSQL database, as can Postgres and almost any other RDBMS system that's just you know set up with a two-column table, uh, one for the name, one for the value. And so this will be able to run completely on a Raspberry Pi without big database backending, depositing little files on your drive. It could run on the cloud. It could run connected to a Google Spreadsheet so that even the files are taken out of the picture and you can collaborate instantly. And it runs without leaving a trail of any sort on your servers to like create a cruft that you'd have to clean up. It's just a com it could be a just completely non-intrusive webhead type of application. If on this side it's this for user interface and this side this for the data storage. But you can mix it up and do it all these different ways. And what kinds of investigations can you do? Any kind. Uh, typically I do um, search engine position tracking in here. Uh, I also do uh, figuring out what uh, keywords pages are targeting. I, I crawl a site into uh, a spreadsheet and then I tell how what the page rank of the URLs discovered, discovered are, how many times each page has been liked in Facebook. And so it has really, really broad application in SEO and social media. But as you might imagine, this is just a generic data mashup lookup system that lends itself really well to working in a spreadsheet environment so you don't have to worry about user interface stuff at all. You cut off massive amounts of development time.
but it also is suitable to running in a very um, hands-off automated environment so long as just as you would with a web server and its log files you determine what happens when large amounts of data start to accumulate so it doesn't get bogged down and through the use of uh, the shove API anything that can go onto a text file can go onto a back-end database and through the use of dictionary of dictionaries the spreadsheet can be taken out of the picture entirely and just become optional and uh, I've fallen in love with the spreadsheet way of doing things so much that I will also provide that method of using the system so follow along with me. Uh, thanks for listening to me uh, lay out the architecture here. Uh, share this with anyone you think should follow along it with a really awesome series of Python tutorials. And don't forget to subscribe.